Danny, I got you a birthday present. Yeah? Look at that milk. It's over there. Peeking out through the trees there, it's uh, Mount Robson. If you've seen our West Coast Trail video, you drove past here. I told you we'd be back. And we are back. We're back. Uh, we've got two nights here in Mount Robson Provincial Park. And we're hiking out to Berg Lake today and staying there tonight. And then uh, doing a little day hike from there probably tomorrow and staying at Emperor Falls. I'm pretty stoked. Me too. Yeah, uh, this one's supposed to be one of the premier hikes in the entire Canadian Rocky Mountains. So. And you're in the shadow of that the whole time. Just... Yep. Yeah, tallest peak in the uh, Canadian Rockies over there. So. We're definitely gonna, uh, gonna get some awesome, awesome footage of it as we get a little bit closer. Spoiler alert, we're not going to the very top of that mountain. Yeah, sorry guys, no views from the top this time around, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> who knows, maybe someday in the future. So, packs are ready to go. You ready to go? All right, let's get moving. Right. Welcome to the Berg Lake Trail. Official trailhead. Uh, this is the Robson River. Robson River. This is one of the busiest hiking areas in the Rocky Mountains. Something like 4,000 people per summer backpack and camp along here, and something like 50,000 people come out for day hikes. Here's a little. Yeah. That's our elevation profile for today. That's what we're doing. Looking at about 21 ish kilometers from here. And, um, that? 700, 800 feet of, or meters of elevation gain, I should say. So, it should be fun. I'll uh, show you the map here. So we start here from the uh, Robson River crossing. Kinney Lake will be the first sort of major um, landmark along the way, I think. Through Valley of the Thousand Falls. And then sort of following along the Robson River to Berg Lake. We're standing at that campground right there, number five. Thank you, Danny. I'm good at pointing. Yeah. So, yeah. I think we're uh, pretty much just walking along the river for a big chunk of it here. Should be pretty good. As you can see, trail's in pretty good shape. <laughs> this is like the most well-maintained trail, I guess, in, in the Rockies. So while it will be challenging, just because some of the elevation and such and the distance that we're covering, the trail itself should be in really good shape the whole way. So especially to Kinney Lake there, which is kind of a super popular little day hike. What, 11 kilometers to Kinney Lake? I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so this is kind of what the uh, trail's been like so far. Very wide, very open, fairly flat, and uh, really dense vegetation. It's actually reminds me a lot of the coastal rainforests in BC. I guess this is sort of as far inland as that sort of growth happens. Um, it is very rainforesty. It's kind of a little section of rainforest in the Rockies. And it's just because um, Mount Robson is actually so big that it creates its own weather system. Uh, so air comes in off the Pacific Ocean, and when it hits Mount Robson, uh, so it travels across BC, then it hits Mount Robson, goes up really fast. It cools and then it sort of falls back as rain. That's why you get rainforest this far inland. It's pretty cool. It's also why um, you see Mount Robson a huge chunk of the time. It's kind of got a little crown of clouds encircling the peak. Like it did this morning. Yeah, just and like it did here. this morning. Beautiful so far. Like I said, pretty easy, but that's to be expected. The hard stuff doesn't come till after Kinney Lake. We've just been sort of within uh, sight, or at least earshot, of the river the whole way so far. It's been a very pleasant stroll through the woods at this point. It's pretty early yet. It's what, like 9 o'clock? 9.30? 9.30 9 
924. We got a fairly early start because we wanted to. You have to check in at the visitor center, the information center, when you get to Mount Robson um, to get your permits and everything for the hike. So we wanted to get there early enough that we were ahead of the crowd because it is an extremely busy place in the summer. It's already pretty busy on the trail, actually. Yeah, we've seen what, a dozen people or so already Just out that. today. Saw a few with big backpacks, saw a few with uh, day packs. One saw, woman with a purse. <laughs> yeah, some people with nothing at all, not even water. Eh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Perfect day for hiking though. Sunny, probably 12, 13 degrees right now. Hopefully when we get up towards Kinney a little bit, things will start opening up and we'll have some, uh, some nice views to show. But for now, we're just gonna keep on moving and enjoying the uh, peace and quiet out here for a little bit. Robson River's no little stream. Impressive. Having fun so far? I like hiking. Alright, wanna do some more? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Doesn't seem to be moving as quickly up here, but that probably just means it's a lot deeper. <laughs> Starting to get in a little bit closer now. Let's get a better look at the mountain. See the tip there because it's shrouded in cloud as it often is. Lake's right there. Hmm. That must be right there. That's probably the uh, outlet of Kinney Lake right there, actually. Very cool. We made pretty good time getting here so far. I don't think that's been no, there, so. no, it hasn't. I think we're at around five. I think it's at around 10 kilometers or 11 kilometers where we start climbing. Mm, so after Kinney Horn Lake. Or something. That's a good spot to stop for a picnic if you're uh, just coming out for the day. Yeah. You're not. No, we've got a while to go yet. Trail. A okay. Well, this place is awful. It's so ugly. This is Kinney Lake, uh, named after Reverend George Kinney, who made a couple attempts at summiting Mount Robson in the early 1900s. First attempt with uh, A.C. Coleman um, on a very, very long trek. I guess they came up from Lake Louise on horseback. It took them six weeks, and they kind of ran out of food, had to turn around. <laughs> um, and then another attempt a couple years later in 1609, or sorry, geez, 1907 was the first one. 1909 was the second one. That sounds right. And they almost made it. <laughs> Good attempt. Uh, Donald Curley Phillips, uh, sorry, sort of a Jasper legend, I guess, uh, in guiding. And um, Reverend George Kinney almost made the summit of Mount Robson. But no such luck. That had to wait uh, four more years before someone finally, finally made it. Yeah, can you imagine without modern gear or anything like that? So that's uh, Whitehorn Mountain in behind the lake there. And uh, this lake is sometimes called the Mirror of the Mount because it tends to be very placid and glass like. People throw rocks in it, make all the ripples. Still pretty nice. You're forgiven.
It's my birthday. <laughs> I feel like I can throw rocks in a lake if I want to. Okay, fair enough. I want to live on this trip. <laughs> and we're only just begun. Still have a long way to go. We got all day to get there. Yep. <laughs> Some other people across the way there. Crossing the bridge. That's where we're headed. All the way around the lake. We're gonna follow that coast all the way around. Around that bend. And then I believe we start climbing up. Up and up and up and up. Up and up. And up. Ready to keep going? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> How's this for a tent site? Don't think you can get much closer to the lake than that. <laughs> See a bunch of people up here. Huddled up underneath the uh, Kinney camp site shelter. Oh, so a pretty good start, eh? I'd wake up here. I like this campsite. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's very nice. Open your tent and see this water. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. So we're what? About six and a half, seven kilometers in, something like that. Not too easy to take out the GPS and give you an exact number. It's been quick and easy going so far. So I don't expect it to stay for very long. Yeah, after we get uh, past the lake here is when it's supposed to start going up to get to the Valley of a Thousand Falls. So yeah, I think we might uh, just pop the packs off for a minute and have a quick snack just because we're making really good time so far. So might as well rest up and get some energy going for the uh, the hard part ahead. And, and it's, gonna, it's, gonna lie, it's a pretty awesome place to stop. Yeah, no doubt. Quick look at the nice little campground map there. 14 camp. Uh, tent pads and all. Bear box up uh, up that way. It says bear pole, but it's actually a box. And uh, yeah, nice little shelter for getting in out of the rain. Obviously not an issue for us today. Uh, you're not allowed to camp in these shelters at all, no matter how crappy the weather is. But it's nice uh, for a good spot to cook and eat anyways. And let you get some, uh, some coverage. Quick little snack and back on the trail. bike rack. We uh, hit the I think 7.2 kilometer mark. This is as far as you're allowed to go with a mountain bike. From here, you need to do it the old-fashioned way. One foot in front of the other. Now, we're heading this way. People who tackle Berg Lake as a day hike ends up being uh, 41, 42 kilometers, something like that return. Makes for a long day, so a lot of people shave off some uh, some time at the very start by taking a mountain bike for the first seven kilometers there. Good option if uh, you're looking to get out and back in a day. Yeah, I feel like I could do that mountain bike. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty uh, pretty gentle for sure. So here's a look down at the uh, Kinney Flats below us. You can see a trail. Park ranger said that there's been a fair amount of bear activity in this area, so got an eye out for sure. It's kind of a cool little area actually. It's just big flat open floodplain. Uh, and see how the bridges across. Mm-hmm. Walking around there. Yeah. Pretty cool. <sighs> Onward and upward. Nice switch switchbacks up ahead. Suspension bridge. Oh, this one feels like it's gonna have a little wobble to it. Nice spot though. The ranger cabin down there. Probably going to keep off in the quick distance.
stopping for lunch at Whitehorn. What's one? Yeah, Whitehorn Campground. Mm -hmm. This is called Whitehorn. Yeah. Yeah, Whitehorn. <laughs> Look across the way there. You can see a little ranger cabin. They they may or may not be there. They may be patrolling the park. But there's an emergency phone or walkie-talkie or something in the cabin that yeah. they can use. Yeah, in there's. Case of uh, yeah, they have them actually mounted to the outside, I guess, by the front door there. So if you need it. Good to know. This is the beginning of the Valley of a Thousand Falls. And from where I'm sitting, got one up here. It's fed from that little chunk of glacier up there. It's pretty cool. One over here. Over there. That one looks a little bit more impressive, actually. <laughs> you can see it's just sort of some mist from it mm -hmm. just coming off the edge around this arete. So, hopefully, we get a better look at that as we keep moving along. Hey, there's a waterfall there. And, uh, let's Just the uh, stream coming down from Whitehorn. So just around that bend there, up in there, is I guess the Whitehorn Glacier. Which I would imagine is pretty uh, impressive to see, but I don't think we're going up there. I don't know if you can go up there. I'm sure people go up there. Hmm. Great start to a hike, though. Very nice. So you can see the uh, Whitehorn shelter over there. Tent beds. It's a big campground. 22 sites. Some of them very, very close together. Hope your neighbor doesn't snore. There's the path leaving Whitehorn. Very nice, right down by the river. Across the way here. It's the uh, real start of the valley, I think, over there. So this is White Falls. First of three uh, pretty spectacular waterfalls along the Ro uh, Robson River. Um, now that we're getting up towards the Valley of a Thousand Falls. Oh, it's nice back here. We're in the shade, there's this cooling mist blowing down off the waterfall. Oh, so nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, pretty cool. We're uh, heading across the bridge there keep along the trail and start working our way up. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was White Falls, but that's just the barest little trickle once you come up around the bend. Woo! It's a little detour, about 20 meters, just up across these very slippery, loose rocks, but, uh, I'd say worth it. <laughs> oh, wow. Here's a uh, higher up view of that waterfall we saw from the uh, Whitehorn Cat around there where we were having lunch. So this is the one that was sort of spraying around the arete. <laughs> I thought it was going to be super spectacular, and I actually thought this might have been White Falls from where we were sitting back there. But it's just a little trickle compared to actual White Falls that you just saw. 
Whew. Pretty awesome. Oh, steep switchbacks now. I think for the next four kilometers or so, we have to gain five, six hundred meters of elevation. So it's gonna be a lot of back and forth. And up and up and up. <laughs> of course, the sun is pretty much just timing itself so that whenever we're doing exposed uphill, it's when it ducks out from behind the clouds and the wind kind of stops. And I brought an extra layer of clothes for this. Well, an extra layer uh, for my upper body anyways for this hike because the weather report was saying lows down to about zero. <laughs> but, man, I'm starting to feel like I might not need it. I know I don't need it. But things do change quickly in the Rocky Mountains at the best of times, and especially in an area like Robson, like I said, kind of creates its own weather. So, yeah, I guess we'll see. If that ends up being a smart move or not, by how cold I get tonight and tomorrow night. <laughs> oh no, I can't complain too much though, just because my pack is so much lighter than it used to be. Um, I really do need to figure out the weight exactly before one of these trips, but I'm thinking it's around the 25 to 30 pound mark now, which is a significant improvement, probably down 20 plus pounds from where we started two years ago. <laughs> Makes me wonder, was I like in much better hiking shape two years ago? Because this still feels hard with a 27 pound pack. Can't imagine doing it with 50 plus. There we go. Confirmation. <laughs> that is definitely White Falls down there. You gotta say that view a little bit further down on the rocks was uh, a little bit more impressive. Although, view back sure is nice. So is that breeze. Falls of the pool. The second of the three main waterfalls along the Robson River. Cool. It's, uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up on that video or not, but there's a little rainbow forming down there from the mist. I'm guessing that's the pool. Here's a look at Emperor Falls. Oh, across the way. <laughs> it's where we're headed, more or less. Kind of, sort of. I might be a little bit of a detour to get out there, but uh, it might be worth it. Because it looks refreshing with that cooling mist. You were told that you can go underneath the waterfall, it gets wet, huh. and that's why it's delightful. Underneath? Well, like to the side of it. Okay. Because it goes. Yeah. There's a spot. Yeah. Somebody, when we were on Iceland, they told us that too. Hmm. Cool. We gained uh, a little over 800 meters of elevation since the uh, trailhead. So that's 27, 2800 feet. It's enough. It's enough. I'm done now. Good. Yep. There's a little further to go. We're getting there though. And once we hit, climb and then once we're at the top, then we have a. Yeah, it's pretty uh, flat, I guess, and lots of walking along this edge of Berg Lake um, as well. So, should certainly be scenic once we get up there. Emperor Falls. Even across the valley, you can kind of feel the cooling effect of the spray that is kicking up. It's pretty sweet. And, uh, And Robson. The tip shrouded in cloud, as it often is. It doesn't look quite as tall as it did from 
down where we started. So we dropped our packs back at the main trail and came on down towards Emperor Falls. And that is refreshing. Holy. Oh, I'm glad we came down here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> well, you can sure get close to it. Oh my god. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> and this right here, this is why we bought a waterproof video camera. Look at it from a little bit further away. It's the peak of Rob sitting behind it. Oh my god. That was one of the most exhilarating <laughs> uh, feelings I've ever had. Just crashing down all around us. Oh, I'm glad we came down here today. When it's really, when it's really hot, because I'm <laughs> no longer hot. <laughs> oh, that cooled me right down for sure. Oh. That was amazing. <laughs> Put you on it for your birthday? more than I could have asked for. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Alright, we're gonna go collect up our stuff and keep moving on. Get to Berg Lake and set up camp. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Leaving the Emperor Falls turn off there. Oh man, that's worth seeing. Oh, so refreshing. Nice hot day. Just uh, stand under that icy water and just get soaked all the way through. It uh, really hit the spot. We were going back and forth trying to decide whether we wanted to go out there or not. Some very friendly folks made sure that we did. So thank you to whoever you were. Uh, that definitely hit the spot. And um, I think I can honestly say as far as just like sheer exhilaration that I felt during a hike. That was one of the high points. Pretty awesome. We're gonna be uh, passing Emperor Falls Campground pretty quick here, where we will be coming back and staying tomorrow night. So you guys will be able to see that tomorrow. Close up look. And we'll see, maybe another detour out to the falls, depending. Uh, it's nice on the way out. Probably do it again. So I'm thinking we made it to Emperor Falls Campground. This is a cool little spot. Got your own little sitting area. Directly across the river from the mountain. Hmm. Yeah, I think we should aim for this spot for tomorrow. Yeah. We'll have to see what the rest of them look like, but uh, if we could grab it, that would be pretty awesome. Well, there's nobody here now and it's 10 to but it is a Friday. True. True. First look at the mist. Robson Glaciers. That is really an encouraging spot site over there because that glacier butts right up against Berg Lake. So that is where we need to get to for our campground. That's where we came. That's 
where we're headed. Made it to uh, Marmot Campground. Same sort of deal. Little shelter down there for eating and whatnot. <sighs> Starting to get some nice views of Berg Lake now. Berg Glacier. Great view of it across the Berg Lake here. So it comes right down towards the edge. And of course, ah, come back this way. I just missed Glacier. The peak of Mount Robson. It should just be a couple more kilometers before we get to our campground. Setting up home for the night. We ended up on the very last tent pad, I think, in the whole campground. But, works out pretty well. It means that there's nobody this side. So, set up a little uh, porch mode. So we should get some nice ventilation this evening. It's not supposed to rain or anything. And if it does, well, it's easy enough to just stake it down. Pretty close quarters down here, and we don't have the greatest view from our tent. But, got a little coffee table. So we can hang out. I think more likely we'll probably go down towards the water. So we have something to look at. Good day. About 23 kilometers, I believe. All said and done. 22 and a half, something like that. Yeah, made it here like right at 4 o'clock. Um, the campground's totally full, as expected. It is one of the busiest trails in the Rockies, so I was expecting it to be. Canadian Rockies. Mm hmm. Fair enough. So, yeah, as expected. It's a. Uh, Fully booked on this beautiful August weekend. Most people do the approach to this campground in two days, so they didn't have to start from you know, the trailhead. They got here a lot earlier than we did. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Feels like it's going to be a nice home for this evening, anyways. Really liking this tent. It's the uh, tarp tent double rainbow. Nice and light. Spacious enough for the two of us. And, uh, yeah, it's been a solid performer so far. Yeah, probably head over to the little cook area and start setting up, having some some snacks. and We're celebrating. Birthday girl! 3-0. It's a big one. Well, we're all settled in at camp, so we decided to come down to the lake shore, take a quick look. By a quick look, I mean we're probably just going to hang out down here and have some snacks and celebrate Danny's birthday. Berg Glacier straight across there. Mount Robson. Robson's the highest peak in the Canadian Rocky Mountains at um, just under 4,000 meters, 3,954, so that's just under 13,000 feet for those who prefer Imperial. Pretty remarkable piece of mountain. It's so prominent and sticks out so much, uh, higher than everything else around it just because of the geology of it. You can see striations. All the layers are pretty much stacked right on top of each other. Made it really, really hard to erode, I guess, as the uh, glaciers receded from here. So, is left with you know, just a remarkably prominent peak. Um, the Shushwa people called it Mountain of the Spiral Road. No one really knows why it's called Mount Robson. It's believed that uh, it was originally named after Colin Robertson, 
uh, a guide for the Northwest Company in the early 1800s. But then that kind of got butchered into Robinson. It was called Robinson's Mountain in the Fur Traders Journal from 1827, uh, a guy named George McDougall. And from there, I guess it got butchered again into Mount Robson. Yeah, interesting. And beautiful. It's uh, no wonder people have been trying to climb this sucker for a good long time. Uh, I mentioned that um, his name, George Kinney almost made it in 1909. He didn't quite make the summit. 1913. Uh, Conrad Kane uh, led a expedition for the Alpine Club of Canada, and they were the first. They got their first uh, ascent in 1913, so just over uh, 103 years ago. Now, yeah. pretty awesome. It's called Berg Lake because uh, this glacier, the Berg Glacier, it calves off frequently and creates icebergs. Kind of see one floating down there. Um, yeah, so little icebergs, hence Berg Lake. Sun is going down over the mountains. But Mount Robson still looks beautiful. Yeah, actually, uh, it's a very nice light at this time mm -hmm. in the evening. It's about 6.30 or so. Dinner. Dinner. Got some uh, tomato Alfredo sidekicks with some venison sausage. Had some uh, pico de gallo salsa. It's been an excellent evening. We're just way down at the very far end of the campground and there's this nicely set up little spot that was all ready to go away from everything else. And we're a long ways away from the, like the camp areas and stuff. We just wanted to be able to come over here and enjoy a little peace and quiet away from the crowds and with this view of one of the most impressive mountains I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's quite powerful. We keep hearing some rumblings from over across the way there so clearly the glacier is shifting a little bit. Keep hoping we're hoping to, to see it cap. Yeah. It'd be cool to see a chunk of it slough off, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, well, I'm starving, so <laughs> I'm going to put the camera away for a little bit. Uh, sunsets in the mountains. A beautiful uh, evening glow on Mount Robson. Perfect way off a fantastic day. So, morning of day two. We're sitting here having breakfast, and this is a really good look at how mountains kind of create cloud formations. So there's a big flat face on the western side of this mountain. The air is cooling as it's running up. And it's forming a cloud right off of the tip. We've watched it form pretty much the whole time. Yeah, it's uh it just keeps keeps going. Same thing's starting to happen up on the top of Rob's in here, actually. It's been a lot of uh cavitation of the glaciers. I hear lots of loud cracking and rumbling and stuff, but I haven't been able to see anything sloughing off, so it could be just uh across up over the ridge there where the actions actually happen happening. It'd be kind of neat to see. It's loud. It is. Yeah, it woke us up in the middle of the night, actually, when it really was going. From the noise of it, I expected like half the glacier should be gone. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Now we're sitting here, I'm trying to figure out what the plan is for today. <clears throat> so, we are Berg Lake, kind of, uh, our campsite's right around here. So, our original plan was to come across here, follow this stream, go all the way along the edge of Robson Glacier, along this cliff, come up 
up here and see Snowbird Pass. We're starting to think that's probably a little ambitious for today, just because we do need to backtrack uh, about six kilometers as well from Berg Lake down towards Emperor Falls where we're camping tonight. Um, so yeah, we'd be looking at probably like a 28 to 30 kilometer day. Um, we want to get to Emperor Falls early enough to hopefully get a decent campsite. There's not a lot of sites there, so if we can get there early, that's probably best. So what we're thinking is we'll pack up camp soon, we'll head over to Emperor Falls, we'll drop our stuff, then we'll backtrack this way, go back to Hargreaves, follow that creek up, and then there's a traverse going across here. I guess there's some really cool caves you could check out, um, things like that, and then maybe come over this way and see Robson Pass and hike back along there. So it'll end up being a decently long day as well. Um, probably, yeah, probably 25 kilometers overall, but we'll be able to do most of it without packs and we'll have camp set up already or at least a good spot at camp claimed already so that there's no hurrying to do that. And then we'll just have to come back and do Snowbird Pass someday in the future. Darn, we have to come back here? Exactly. Coffee. Cheers. And then we're gonna get all packed up and start to uh, get the day started, I guess. So, yeah, expect some cool footage along the way anyways, whatever we end up doing. Here's the uh, Berg Lake shelter. <laughs> a little bit different than the other ones. It's got actually hard walls. This was a cabin the Hargreaves family built way back when, and they donated to BC Parks eventually. Nice little spot. <laughs> nice little view. So, you can see Berg Lake in beside me there. We're on the move. It's about 9.30. We're uh, just finished packing up camp. We're heading towards Emperor Falls Campground. So we decided that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over there. We're gonna get spot cleaned for camp set up and then um, see how we're feeling. We might backtrack and do the detour up to um, Hargreaves Lake and check out some caves and things like that. Or we might uh, just chill out at camp and have a relaxed day. We'll see. We'll Which we never do. What's that? We never have just a relaxed day at camp. So. Sometimes it's nice. It is. So, yeah, we'll see. The weather report when we left yesterday said that there is a decent chance of some thunderstorms this afternoon. But it also said high of 16 and it already feels like it's like 16 degrees right now. It's really nice. Really nice out. So, should be a nice little walk. I think we've only got five kilometers to get to Emperor Campground. And yeah, we'll see what happens from there. So some of the uh, cavitations we've heard over the last little while must have been off this glacier because there's new icebergs floating out there. <laughs> so that's out towards uh, Berg Lake and past that Snowbird Pass where we were originally thinking of going. Got some stormy looking clouds starting to form over there. Got some blowing in over here as well. So yeah, looks like the weather's changing. Might get that rain after all. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, ropes and totally cloud capped now. One last quick look around. And we're uh, going to be getting back into the tree cover pretty soon here. And heading for our next campsite. Just after 12 noon, made it to Emperor Falls. Got our campsite all set up. And the cool thing about this campsite, it's got its own little private area over here. Those uh, rain clouds were making me a little bit nervous. So I set up the tarp so we can move this bench underneath the tarp later 
if it's necessary. Give us some coverage while we're hanging out. Beautiful spot, just right on the edge of the Robson River. Pretty cool. So we are gonna do our little um, detour. We're gonna head up to Hargreaves Lake, uh, get some good views of some glaciers, and possibly check out some caves. And yeah, looking forward to it. Should be pretty fun. So we went down to Egypt Lake, set up our camp. Met in Emperor Falls. <laughs> yes, we went down to Emperor Falls, set up our camp, and now we're backtracking. We have to go back about three, three and a half kilometers to a detour trail that heads up towards Hargreaves Lake. That's why there's some back and forth. We decided it was the best way to go because it let us get over there early, claim a good spot, get everything set up so that if the thunderstorms come that are supposed to come this afternoon, we're already set up. We don't have to deal with that crap in the rain. We got a nice little spot, a little private cooking area, and I already set up the tarp um, so that we can just sort of have a little area to hide under and uh, chill out later on if it comes to that so we're not sort of locked into our tent, which would be nice. All right, so about three, three and a half kilometers from uh, our campground. Got to the turn off for Hargreaves Lake route, which is where we're we're going now. So we're kind of like right around there. Come up this way. We might do the Mum Basin loot. Come back. And then all the way back to camp. Oh, we'll see. We will see. Definitely gonna get up at least here. So, should be cool. Just scrambling up the moraine. Oh. Not exactly where the trail goes, but pretty cool. <laughs> Footing's a little precarious. Just a pretty thin little ridge. <laughs> pretty awesome though. View from above the lake's pretty nice too. That would be the Hargreaves Glacier. Tucked up in there. So we're gonna keep going along this ridge, I think. Look down at the lake from above. Yeah. You're going back down? Yeah. Let me take the ridge for a little bit. So I came along the moraine a little further. Got a little glimpse of the lake there at the base of the glacier. It's pretty cool, just smoothed out. Bed rock over here. Pretty nice. Of course, on the far side of the moraine, there's an actual official trail going up to uh, Lookout over Hargreaves. So I could have walked all the way along the ridge and had an easy time descending on the other side. But I didn't know that. Now I do. So, just working our way up to the top here. Sure gives you a great look back at the lake. Just to make it to the top, I think. Oh, I see the cairn over there. View. But the path goes up this way. I don't know what to do. I'm going across. Straight line seems to make more sense at the moment. Hargreaves Glacier. Down the valley there. It's the uh, last 
second. It's some really good looks at Rob's in the here. Which, um, I guess just makes these things look adorably small. That's for next time, though. That's for next time. Made it to Toboggan Creek. Half up this way to get back to Bird Lake or to go up to the cave. So we just kind of didn't make a decision. Going up again. <laughs> and yeah, I just hit the junction for uh, Toboggan Creek Trail that leads back to Berg Lake or try going up towards the cave. Danny wasn't feeling the heat, so she opted to turn around. But being the glutton for punishment that I am, <laughs> I just had to push on. It certainly has been fairly steep so far, but hopefully it'll be worth it when I get up to the cave. As you can see, I had to climb a little ways to get up here. Pretty awesome though. And there's the sign I was looking for. So, came up the Hargreaves Toboggan way. This does link up to Mum Basin, so you can do it as part of that hike. Uh, that is what I'm after, right there. <sighs> Pretty cool. Drop my pack, duck in there for a second, see what it looks like. There's a few little chipmunks watching me, just hoping I put my pack down. So, I'm gonna keep it with me so I can't get into it, get it in my garbage. All right, let's do this thing. way to cool down that's for sure watch your step if you come in here it's very very slippery <laughs> it's my GPS telling me I just lost service sorry this isn't coming across well on the video just have to get it to focus looks like the end of the line for a cool little detour. Oh, because it'll help me stay cool, oh. but it'll also make things a little slippery. So, gonna have to be careful on the way down. Whew. That was the cave. Definitely worth the detour. Pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna start working my way down. So just to the left of the entrance to the cave, there's a cairn and a little path running up this way. You can see another cairn off in the distance as well. So there might be something up there. I'm kind of tempted to go check it out, but it's starting to rain a little bit. Things could get slippery. I'm by myself, and uh, no one knows that I'm going any further than the cave. Danny thinks so I'm just going to the cave and then going back. So with all those things, I should probably just head on down. I just have to drop all the way down. Danny said she'd probably be waiting by Berg Lake down there. Certainly where we camped yesterday. 
Uh, coming up here definitely makes me want to do the rest of this Mum Basin Trail sometime. But again, you can just uh, add that on to the list of things to do next time we come back. Mum Basin and Snowbird Pass. I think that's probably going to be the plan for next time we're here. Alright, I'm going to start working my way down here. Here's a look down at Toboggan Falls. As I'm working my way along, pretty nice. I like how it's uh, so smooth, little bumps along the way. Little dips. And it's just sort of like cut underneath this one giant slab flying at the bottom. So, I got back to Berg Lake safe and sound. It was hailing for a while there, so all the rocks and roots were getting pretty damn slippery. Still, made it here. Danny was not waiting at the spot she said she would be if she was uh, still there, which I totally get. The rain would have uh, driven me on as well. So we said that she would either be waiting there or she'd start going back to camp. So, I just need to head back to camp. About five more kilometers. I'm really glad we took the time to set up camp and our little tarp and everything before coming out here. Because now we find nice dry areas to hang out. So, good stuff. Here comes that hail again. I'm seriously considering calling this the summer of hail. This is our fourth trip out, I want to say, where we've got pelted by uh, little snowballs. Looks <sighs> like I might be catching up to Danny going across the flats there. Yep, that's her. Oh god, sorry, that's really shaky. Motion sickness. <sighs> the rain keeps coming and going, but uh, it's nice. Kind of keeping me cool. And it's not so hard that I'm soaking through it or anything. It stops and by the time it rains again I'm already dried out. Except for the sweat. That's that's not going in. What a great day. Should just be two, three more, three more kilometers maybe to camp and then we can chill out for the evening. Man, my knee is aching after all the downhill. It's not looking forward to the way out tomorrow because all that steep ascent we did, we gotta go back down it. Ah, <laughs> oh, I just missed it. A little bit of the glacier sloughing off there. Hmm. Well, look who I found. Hi. How was your break? It was good. Yeah. yeah. Just chilled by the lake. Did some of that. Yeah, uh, gave myself a little bit of a bath. Nice. That's good. Got stuck in a hailstorm. Yeah. I figured you'd left when the hail started. Yeah. And met some nice people. Nice. Uh, adventured around the toboggan waterfalls. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, they're nice, right? Mm -hmm. They're pretty cool. Too. Oh, all right. Good stuff. Almost back to camp. Yep. Ready to take my boots off. Me too. Shoes off. Whatever. But. It's too much. I caught some serious air when he was running. Whoa. You hear the rain coming down. But I'm nice and dry at the moment. Underneath my tarp. This is why we came out here early. So we could claim this spot. The view of the mountain. And right by the river. And so we could set up a nice little compound. Bench and everything. For if the weather turned on us. And it has. Starting to storm a little bit. We're huddled under a tarp. There's a woman over by the pump station right now uh, washing her dishes. We feel kind of bad. We're 
for washing her dishes while murdering. What you do? We've been there. We have. We have. But and now we're we'll here. be there again. Yeah. Now we're here, and this is nice. Yeah. We're going to have a little snack, a little uh, and cheese and stuff like that. Think no wine left. Salad. No wine left. Yeah, it's hard to tell whether uh, what the weather's gonna do. Um, said thunder showers this afternoon, and here we are. So, what is it around 4:35? Uh, 5:30. 5:30. Yeah. Yeah. So we should just stay dry for a couple more hours, and we'll be packing it in anyways. I think we'll stay dry. Yeah, this storm doesn't seem to be lifting up anytime soon. Summer of hail continues. Look, now there's wind. Super. Morning of day three. This little tarp is a godsend. Put their little cooking and eating area totally dry. The tarp's completely wetted through because it dumped rain last night, but it was uh, dry enough. Oh. Here's the sun coming up. And that was awesome. Clouds are really moving. What a great spot. Super nice campground here. It's Emperor Falls. It's only nine sites, so it's a little less crowded than some of the other ones. There is no shelter though, so if you're gonna stand here, I would recommend bringing some sort of tarp just in case you get caught out in a storm like we did. You, know, you wanna have some place to stay dry. Oh, well, we're going to get all packed up. Um, we've got 16 kilometers of hiking and then, uh, you know, four and a half hour drive or so to get home. So we're going to get moving. Uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to film on the way out just because it's stuff we would have seen on the way in. We're just going back along the exact same track we came in on. So. But if anything crops up, catches my interest, I'll definitely check in again. If not, we'll do a little recap at the end there. It's about quarter after eight. We're on the trail, doing our descent from Emperor Falls Campground, heading back home. So I'll stop and get one more look at the falls here. We didn't do the detour this morning because, well, it's kind of chilly. That's a little bit uh, nicer trip to do when it's hot out. <laughs> Not Robson, capped with clouds as usual. So that's Emperor Falls back there. The Robson River is flowing around there. But, once upon a time, a long, long time ago, down here was the Robson River. Flowed down this valley for, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands of years. But eventually it eroded a new channel for itself up along the top. You can see when it rains, it 
actually goes down this way still just a little bit. A little stream is all that's left of the, uh, the original path of the Robson River here. Just to see something a little bit different, we got to the Kinney Flats area. And there's a spot where the main trail goes up. And then there's a secondary trail that runs down right along the side of the river. So we decided to take the secondary trail, see how it is. Uh, I'm kind of thinking we might have to cross some streams or something along the way, but it seems pretty nice so far. And it's gonna save us a little bit of up and down. So we can kind of just stay right along the, uh, the river here. Pretty cool. Let's open it up a little bit here. Oh yeah, there's a whole series of little bridges along here that uh, seem to be covering most of the crossings anyways. Kind of nice down here for sure. All right, so didn't uh, end up filming any more on the trail on the way out just because it was stuff that we had seen on the way in. Thought we covered pretty much everything except for all the stuff we missed. Um, we obviously didn't have enough time to really explore the area. What is there? Mum Basin, Snowbird Pass, all kinds of fun exploration to be had in that area. So we're definitely planning on going back someday in the future. Uh, as it was, though, seriously one of the most beautiful, scenic, um, and just super fun weekends we've had out in the mountains. We've got some spectacular peaks and glaciers and lakes and waterfalls and it's pretty awesome, and there's a reason why it's so popular. Uh, that being said, if you're planning on going out there, make sure you're looking early for uh, permits. I think we had to book ours a few months in advance. Um, I'll throw a link in the description as to where you can go looking for info on that stuff. Because um, I would definitely recommend going out and checking that one out. So, thanks for watching as always.